So, what to put the processor in? It's an i7 6700K LG51. It's a Skylake CPU. Purposely got this because, well, these are godsends. They're brilliant for gaming, they're not too overpowered, they're not underpowered, they're future proof and they don't use much power which lets you have a bit more headroom for your uh, graphics cards. Inside the box for the processor, if I can get my blasted thumb in there. I have big thumbs, it's not the best of thing to have for a uh, PC building. But we have the processor, instruction manuals with a shiny sticker to go on the front of my case which says Core i7 inside. Just so if you're one of those people that likes to put uh, stickers on front of their computers, they do come on with these parts. They come along with all this. We also have a Republic of Gamers sticker that came with the motherboard to go on the front as well. The processor comes in a neat little box, which is inside a cardboard thing to stop it flying around while it's in transit. Really just a storage kind of thing. We'll tuck all this back away before we get onto the actual install. Now should be another point where you're grounding yourself, um, as the CPU is very delicate. Yes. Um, the best way to put it is the CPU is your brain of your computer, for those of you that are tuning in to find out how to build one. The CPU is literally going to be the brain of your computer, it does every, it's going to tell your computer how to do everything. So this is going to be a very delicate part and you really don't want to damage this. Um, now the best way to as to how you're going to know how to install your CPU is on your guard here. There'll be an arrow somewhere, and in this case it's here, pointing down. And on your CPU, I'll see if I can find it if I close the box. You can't see it through the box. On your CPU, if you look very carefully in this bottom corner here, so there is a golden triangle. You can see that there? So you're going to match this arrow, so your arrow on your thing. So in this case it's going to go that way. here. So if you want to open it up, we open up the lever, and then it literally is it's going to sit on it. Very so carefully. It's very hard to get it on the wrong way around. There is little notches cut into the socket and the CPU, and now so it doesn't really go in the wrong way around. At this point, when you're going to put the, uh, put your shield back over, it is going to feel stiff, it is going to feel hard, and you may hear a snapping noise. This is the CPU getting put into place. You are not breaking anything. Unless you are breaking something. <laughs> in which case, you fucked up. <laughs> it is really hard to do so. It's just simply just follow the instructions, how you took the uh, shield off, put the shield right back on, and you should be fine. Um, so you're not breaking anything in your CPU, um, you're more of what's doing its job and it's holding it in place. Take your time and don't force it. If it does feel too stiff, don't force it, just double check you've got it in the right way and it's not going to destroy everything. That's not what you want to do. If you want to get rid of it. Uh, but what we are going to do first, before we stick the RAM in, is get something out of this box here. If I get it the right way up it would help. So we're going to need there we go. We're not going to need that. No, we're not going to need that yet. We're going to need the mounting stuff for an Intel socket. We'll show this part off later. We just need to get a couple of bits. We just need to get some parts out so we can stick them on now. Otherwise, the RAM gets in the way due to the size of the bloody heat spreaders. Get those out now. Uh, here we have the rear mount. I can't actually see where that is on the screen. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the rear mount that goes on the back of the board to mount the heat sink on with. And we have the correct Intel standoffs and thumb screws. In the H100i, there is also standoffs for AMDs and the 2011 socket from Intel as well as all the 1150X sockets. So that'll cover your 1150s, your 1151s, your 1155s, covers everything really. Uh, you'll have to follow your instructions on how to install CPU coolers because they are all different. There is a ridiculous number of variations, but this one, you put the plate through, you take the standoffs, and you just screw them in. So they go tight with your fingers. Obviously, make sure you pick up the right standoffs because this one just comes with three different ones. We already yeah. have the right standoffs put in a bag to one side. We have. It's just there. Little standoffs stuck in. Uh, it won't be that easy to see because they are shiny metal against shiny plastic. 
but we'll try and get a better shot once I've screwed them down. Right, I can probably work on that right now. If you just want to quickly grab the cam, just so it's on the side. I was just going to hold it up to the camera, really. If we screw these in nice and tight. Right, we've got a closing cam for a reason. Uh, where's my last one? Where's my last one? Uh-oh, thumb screw's doing a roll. It's fine. <laughs> it's not. Thumb screw's making a run for it. Yeah, if you just want to grab the close-up cam once you're done. Let's do that. Here we have the mounting hardware for the uh, for these standoffs here. At this four of them, one in each corner. At this point, it all should be noted, be very careful when you're grabbing your motherboard from the bottom. As if, my, you, if you want to try and flip it. My hand is actually on the mount on you the don't back really plate, want to, not on any pins or anything. It is physically on the plate itself. You don't really want to touch that. On top of that, even if you are grounded or anything, that is going to hurt quite a bit. Also, because it's not going to pop up on the screen because I haven't had them in yet. Thank you for the follow, Mesa. Uh, I can't even say that. I'm just going to say Mesa. Thank you for the follow, Mesa, and welcome to the binary. I hope you enjoy your stay here in the database. Now, we do normally have an on-screen pop-up, but we've had to make this overlay last moment, so I haven't had time to put it in. Apologies, but thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Uh, next thing will be the RAM, I believe. Now we've got our standoffs here. The RAM will be our next objective. Indeed. We can't really put that on because that's going to have to go in the case first. Yeah, this may take some trial and error and come in and out of the case several times. I can easily imagine. This may be a lot of trial and error when it comes to actually inserting so this into the case. I'm going to pass one of those to use and we have these for the camp. So <laughs> we've got Dominate Platinum, 16 gig of RAM. Um, 3,000 3, megahertz. So yeah, I'm going to use this one for the cam view while you install that one. Uh, so they come with Corsair Link on them. So you can replace these as for LED ones. Yet yeah, again, if you want to show off your case a little bit more to your friends and family, so you can <laughs> get them. So if you want to light up this bit here, that you can't really see all that well unless I zoom in. There we go. You can barely see it, it says Dominator DDR4, so you can get this little bit of LEDs. Um, um, I believe, uh, so you can also get like ones that go along the bottom. This already has LEDs inside of it. Which you will see later on when it's all lit up nice and shiny. Uh, um, quick note to say about installing your uh, memory, if I crack a quick and borrow don't, don't touch the gold bits on the bottom, try and hold it by the heat spreaders themselves. If you have RAM without heat spreaders, try and hold it by either end like that, so you're not actually touching any of your contacts. Because you may not n may not feel it or know, but there is oil on your fingers that your skin naturally leaks, for lack of a better word. I mean, if we and it can cause a short circuit. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Sticks. Like you can see a slight shine more over under the coarse a bit there. Like this is just natural grease that comes off your fingers and stuff. But a quick note about installing your RAM. Um, DDR1, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. Basic bases where this little notch is. You can see that little gap. You want to line this up with the slots in your as in. So they're only going to go one way. So if it goes in this way, it's not going to go in that way. That's how it works. They are going one way around. I can't put that one in yet. I've got to take off the little plastic covers. I forgot to take it off this one. Uh, this one. Uh, so we've not got it. So before I can no, it has them on either side. It's literally just on the Corsair logo. Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Little tiny ones. I didn't notice them until I saw this one. I went, ah, crap. There's yep. one. Doing it live right here. <laughs> Peeling off the shiny. Uh, the Dominator Platinum RAM also has a Corsair Link connector, which is a little tiny pin on this side of the motherboard, or this side of the uh, RAM there. If you want to show them, it's just there. This bit here? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, again, another bit you don't really want to try and touch. Yes, it's a so little, little tiny Corsair Just link right next to where my thumb is for focusing. There we go. Perfect focus. Oh, and we lost it. It's Come somewhere. On. Focus will come. It'll come. Woo! There it is. Kind so of. We got anyway, yeah, there's a little time to see it. Barely. There, there we go. There, there, we there go. it is. So there oh, we go. Got again. That is a connector to allow you to connect your RAM to a Corsair Link master uh, master control box, which you can monitor your RAM frequencies, the CAS legacies, and temperatures and all that from a the Corsair Link program inside the PC. Uh, when you're installing the RAM, you undo the clicks, which this said it only has one on this side. But you undo the clicks and you just slide it in, 
other side to the one that's undone and line it up with the slot. Now you'll hear a clicky noise when you push down it. Push down fir firmly sure but not too firm. Clear. And then you just push on either side until you hear it go click and then click again. Like I say, and push firmly but not too firm. You don't want to break your motherboard. Firmly enough to, to get the pressure into it and then you'll hear a click and you know it's in place. If it does feel like it is too tight, remember, just take a step back, double check you put it in the right way around, double check you've got the right RAM, which is actually surprisingly hard to do. You DDR3 will all fit in DDR3, 4 will all fit in 4, but you can't get a 4 and a 3 or a 3 inside of a 4. It's all notches, are all individually spaced, so you can't get them wrong. And if you do, you've probably just broken your RAM or your motherboard as well. Now, yes, so sir. now at normal things, if you've got um, a fan heat sink, you this would. is normally the point where you want to install it, but in this we case, don't we have air cooled. Uh, so we're walking the CPU, so we're not installing that at this moment. But if you've got an air cooled heat sink, this is normally the part where you're going to install your air heat sink. Now, um, obviously, once you apply thermal paste, yes, always apply the thermal paste. Also, it is highly recommended, even if uh, as the stock heat sink or the CPU comes with pre applied thermal paste. It's always advised to wipe that off with a tissue and it's, uh, it's by uh, use 99% pure alcohol. alsopropyl alcohol. I can't say that word. It's basically 99% pure alcohol. It will clean any residue, oil, fingerprints. It'll clean the processor completely spotless. Even though that one does look clean, there will be stuff on it that we will get off with the alcohol wipe shortly. Once um, we go around to actually getting thermal paste, it is advised to have a nice smooth service for all this, but it's always better to buy an aftermarket thermal paste to apply on afterwards. Uh, we have not down there. It's in your box. It's in my box a bit, because that's where it is. It's in my little box. In my box, we have. We have got Coolmaster E1 uh, thermal paste. It's the one I recommend, it's not the most expensive, it's not the best, but it, it does the job and I've always seen an improvement over standard. Also, uh, quickly point out, um, in fact, I've got the exact same one here. Yes, you've got the exact same tube in your hand. Yes, so here's a one outside the box, it's just a little syringe, a little cap for it, you've got to put it on. I would like to point this, out... This is going to focus. There is all the stats and stuff there, I can't be bothered reading them out. Um, it is also to point out... This one tube is not for an entire CPU, you do not spread no, you will anything. only use a very small, very, very small amount. Well, we will show you roughly the right <laughs> amount of stuff. Uh, there's different methods to apply this, but we're going to use the most common method, which is um, normally grain a of rice. grain of rice, and then you put the heat sink on top. But like I say, you, this entire tube, we've used this... Four computers, uh, laptop... Both, laptop, both consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Like, we've used this a good, say... Seven or eight times. I'll say twelve maximum. Mm -hmm. uh, we've used it a lot, basically. A we've lot. used it a few times, and there's still a bit left in it, so you do get a quite a bit for your money. So don't worry about it. And if you, <coughs> there's no really need to, uh, no need to go for highly expensive when you have thermal paste. Um, they all pretty much do the exact same thing. Um, I mean, this was like what five ten pound. Uh, it's nine ninety nine at Maplin's by us. I don't know where it would be in the rest of the country. Yeah, so ten pound for the tube, and then obviously everything you've seen and the other thing, and that's going to do you quite a bit. And it's really good thermal paste. There's no, really no need to go overboard on the money you're going to spend to buy this. Now, the next thing will be the cooler. The cooler. Yes, it will be a thing that we saw briefly before, as I got the mounting bracket out of the rear of the case. We have a H100i GTX all-in-one liquid cooler from Corsair. It is a very nice cooler. I would recommend all of the all-in-one coolers from Corsair. They're just, they're outstanding. I've never had a problem with them at all. And this one is their, one of their latest and one of their greatest, as always. We have a good old classic flappy box that all PC parts seem to have. Um, also, as a quick moment to mention, for those of you that are scared of water cooling your system, get a big screech there. For those of you that are actually scared of water cooling your systems, um, I can understand the scare. I was there myself. Um, however, I would say if you're going to water cool your system, go to a cooling system like this, as as Corsair and a lot of other companies, 99% of them, have a warranty in place 
that if this water cooler leaks and breaks any parts, they will replace it and the water cooler itself. So this, it's highly recommended if you're going to get water cooler in any way, shape or form, as for a beginner and you're really scared to do a custom one, go this route, it's going to be so much easier. Uh, you have your quick start, start guide, which tells you everything you need to know. It has all your instructions on how, what hardware you have and how to install the different hardware and which ones you'll need depending on which socket type you have. This includes the instructions for AMD and Intel. So that's everything you need to know about sticking it inside of your computer. We have the standard fans that come with it. You get two fans with it, both 120 static pressure L fans, which are, as you can see, pretty plain, pretty much pretty plain black and grey, boring, and just they're just static pressure versions of the case fans. They do have small holes. I don't know if you can see the little tiny hole there. There's one on each side. They have small holes to put your own LEDs in. If you, you know, handy with a soldering iron and a bit of cable, you can stick your own LEDs in them, but I don't know why you would bother. It'd be cheaper just to get normal fans. So we got static pressure, 120 mil, high performance Corsair fans. Dual pack. Dual pack. There is two in this pack. Yeah. That's the boxing. We also have another pack of the exact same fans. As on this wall call, we are using a push-pull configuration, um, which basically means we have two, uh, two fans on either side of the radiator. This push, push and pull can be debated all year long, and you'll never get an answer. Basically, it all comes down to personal preference, how you want it. Um, there is no ultimate push is better, pull is better, push pull is better. It is for your eyes. Push pull is a little bit better. But like say, push pull is better for high restriction radiators. But if you've got a low resistance radiator, then you're going to see no benefit from a push pull setup. Uh, it's down to the radiator you've got and personal preference. Um, so, at which point, like I say, it's all down to personal preference. If you want to push, you have a push. If you want to pull, you have a pull. If you want to push pull, have push pull. Uh, I'd also like to take this brief moment to point out. Here is the other mountain hardware that came in the box. Normally, uh, leave that for a minute. Get the phone down first. I'm just taking it out. You don't want to take that off, would it? Get back over there. Get the wrap off. Normally, uh, on the base of here, this one's going to there would be a grey circle of thermal paste. Pre applied, but like I say, we've tested and wiped we've off and already. cleaned it all off ready for the new fresh thermal paste to go on. If you see, it's nice and shiny and clean. The cleaner and shinier the contact is, the better, better really. Because if it's a cleaner surface, it means there is less dirt on it, which will create a heat spot where the thermal, resist thermal resistance is greater than the rest of the uh, heat, uh, water block or heat spreader. The plastic plates along this top here do come off. I'm not I think those pop off, I'm not entirely sure. Be useful if I knew. But we have the grey bar on the side of here, goes from my two fingers here. As well. That as is interchangeable perfect. with a blue and a red. I think that's your two options. You get a blue and a red option. You can change it out to be coloured. There is also a mount on top of there. Right there. there we go. That one there can also be changed to be colour coordinated with the fans and the rest of your case. I'll just check the colours. Uh, where's the box? Where's the yes, it is blue and red. Blue and red is your other options, which means you can make it match these. And also, there is, uh, is on that corset as what well, as block there. There is LEDs in that, which yet again, multiple well, colour choices to make it match the colour scheme if you want to go for a little more design on your case. This is one thing we have not opened and pre-cut the uh, sellotape tape on. My dog is in there. So so, uh, we have our trusty unboxing knife. Ah. Trusty unboxing dagger. Which is very reliable when it comes to unboxing cases. But apparently it requires, requires sharpen because it does not want to cut. There we go. does not want to cut the... Uh, tape on top of this box. Which is rather unfortunate because you were meant to be reliable. I literally just said you were reliable and then you weren't reliable. And I'm now talking to a metal blade. Well done. We, oh, forgot to mention, we have our Corsair Link cable which allows you to control your pump speed, set custom fan waves, 
and basically completely customise what this pump is doing and what this pump is doing to these fans from inside the Corsair Link program. They are very big on it and it is, well, it's amazing really, to be honest, the amount of stuff you can do with it. And inside here, inside here we have our fans. We'll I'd also like to take this moment while it's unpacking the fans to say, as for those that are, as, like I say, new to PC building, Corsair do a really smart thing with the branding. We have SP and F as AF, static pressure and airflow. Static pressure is good for uh, like your radiator, in tight spaces, and airflow is better for open spaces. That being said, though, static pressure can, as most of the time, especially with as Corsair, as actually equal the amount same as airflow going through in an open space that the as the AFs would do. So sometimes it's as doesn't really matter, but as as many Corsairs does it like this. Go over what a few options do. This is one of Corsair's most common set of fans um, with the interchangeable rings, no LEDs in it, just a simple ring colour, which can actually uh, make it good for those of you that don't want to go full razzle-dazzle on your lighting. As you, as you may have noticed by the rest of my case, these just pull off, they should pull out. On the side of here we have little little tabs, you can just see the little lump over there, and the tiny lump behind my finger. That lines up with the corner, and then it just pushes on and they're all clipped on with a new colouring. Little snaps and now I've now got a red cover on our fan. JPH1589, thank you for the follow and welcome to the binary. I hope you enjoy your stay here in the database and for the rest of this PC build. Uh, inside the box you get the little tray with the rings that are going to all get changed to red. And we have some mounting hardware, little tiny screws. Just your standard ass fan screws, really. Normal thread, normal Do you screws. guys take questions? Yes, we do. Ask away. We'll ask uh, answer, answer anything you like. For good reason. <laughs> Don't ask me what colour boxes I've got on. They're blue, just so you know already. In case you're interested. Yes, we take questions. So go ahead and ask away. We're here to help as much as we can. Now, Do you want to hand me the other box so I can bend them for you? Let's open them up. I am more thinking, do I have long screws to mount the push-pull? I don't know if I have the long screws to mount the push-pull on it. I was curious where the pump is, as is, as, yeah. is it as an all-in-one system? As, is it in the CPU block? Yes, the pump is in the CPU block, and the reservoir is on either end of this radiator. It's down here. It's all in one. It's all tucked away very nicely. Uh, they're very quiet pumps as well. They don't make a lot of noise, which is quite nice when you want water cooling. You want it to be nice and quiet. The pump is inside of here, along with the fan controllers and stuff for the radiator fans. The downside to this, the unfortunate downside to this radiator is it only has a connector for two fans. So the fact we're going to push pull means we need fan splitters, which we do have. I was going to say, it's looking thing you bought then. Over there. We planned ahead. I looked at everything I was going to need and went, right, I'm going to need a lot of this stuff. Sorted it all out. So everything should go together nicely. We shouldn't have any problems today, which would be lovely, hopefully, anyway. Hopefully it will all go according to plan. I'd rather not have to uh, be like, and I fucked up. As far as I know, it's all going to work out. Put these back away. Now, I have no idea where the mountain hardware is the other two fans. I have a bag of screws that came with the mounting hardware. And a crap ton of washers. What have I got here? I have eight long screws for my fans. But I need eight more long screws to mount my radiator to the top of my case. Hmm, indeed. So it may, you may not be doing a push pull today. 
Uh, inside the 700D over there, there is a box in one of the hard drive trays. Mm -hmm. Could you provide them with said box, please? Give me one moment. They should, of course, there, being the babes they are, Give me should. The they require. The last time I bought a Corsair case, and same with NZXT, they are both very good for this. Uh, the last time I bought one, it had all the mounting hardware I would actually need, regardless of whether the fans gave me what I needed or not. They gave me everything I needed straight off the bat. Um, the only reason you mentioned any NZXT is because I've got one sitting right there. Um, Oops. They are very good cases, both companies. Alright, so let's have a look inside this there. Now, I don't know why I didn't mention. Direction of these fans. How does I know which way they're blowing? Nine times out of ten, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say 99 times out of ten, if that makes any sense to anyone, well done. If the air blows towards this, so the air will come in this way and out that way. So if we were setting it up on the radiator that way, that would be pulling air through the radiator and blowing it out this way. But if we placed it this way round, it would pull air from in here and blow it out there. And if you, in case you don't know, or in case a fan might be different, if you look around the outside, like here there's little tiny, tiny arrows and they're never going to get picked up by the camera. There's a little tiny arrow saying which way the fan spins and which way the air flows. So you, they all do have them marked and if they're not, you can have a hazard a guess and hope for the best, really. Don't worry, Basic, you've maybe missed the beginning, but it's all going to go on YouTube and we actually aren't that far into it. You built the motherboard. I would showed off the case. There's one set of screws that you required. It's got enough bloody washes to do it all. Oh, of course, sir, do not let me down. Uh. Trying to put a side panel on with one hand. It's not easy. No, it's not. This is where it all starts going tits up. We start making it up as we go along. I've crapped under mountain hardware. Do I have the screws I need? I have four of them. Really? Yes, really. This may be interesting then. A push pull may be slightly harder than previously expected. Um, I know where all the screws are that would make it work. Where? Where's your box of screws? <laughs> well, for now... Um, actually, all the little plastic bags in that box right there. We may have to go raid a spare screws box. This could get interesting. To my knowledge, we put all the extra stuff in that box right there, the box inside the box. The external hard drive box. The side panel's back on. Awesome. <laughs> side panel may be back on, but we're still making this up as we go along. <laughs> What's these here? These are my thumb screws for that. Uh, you reckon they're in here, do you? Yes, at the bottom. Screw the law. You're looking for the long screws, aren't you? Really long ones, yeah. You mean the ones we used to mount the 120? Those ones. Five Oof. cases have been raised, so if I want to raid it here. <laughs> Don't do push pull. Uh, how many do we have in it's here? It's a good thing I'm not doing push pull. Four, I plan to do pull. Four. 1, 2, 3, 4, 